Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to specify analysis criteria and assign properties in RAM frame. For this particular video, we're going to be discussing rigid end zones and panel zones within RAM frame. First, let's go ahead and start with rigid end zones. The joint face distance is the distance from your center line of your joint to the face of the support of a beam or column element. It is sometimes referred to as the panel zone. Since there may be negligible deformation in this zone, analysis based on your center line to center line dimensions of such members may overestimate the actual deflections of your structure. Now within RAM frame, you can use the general criteria to declare whether or not the effects of the rigid end zones will be considered or ignored. So let's go ahead and turn our attention to RAM structural system. To specify whether or not you would like to include or ignore the effects of rigid end zones, you can go to the main menu, select criteria, followed by general. Within the general criteria, you will be able to see the rigid end zone criteria. Now it will be based on your engineering judgment on whether or not you want to include your rigid end zones. For my sample model, for example, I have determined as the engineer that since I have concrete moment frames, I would like to include the effects of rigid end zones. You're going to notice that when you include the effects of rigid end zones, your member force output will automatically be reported at the face of joint. In addition, I do have a reduction percentage that I can go ahead and enter. So if your effects are to be included in the analysis, a percentage reduction can be entered. A value of zero indicates that the rigid end zones are not to be reduced and their full effects will be considered. For this particular model, I'm gonna go ahead and enter a 25% reduction. Click OK. Now at this point, I'd be ready to go ahead and perform my analysis in RAM frame and I would be able to see my member force output at the face of joint and those rigid end zones at a 25% reduction would be considered in the analysis. Now it's important to understand that all of the options within the general criteria within RAM frame are global options. So what are the options that you have when you want to include your rigid end zones for some of your members or some of your systems, but not for others? And let's go ahead and imagine that our sample structure had two additional stories on it made out of steel moment frames. And my plan for this particular structure is to include the rigid end zones for my concrete moment frames, but then to ignore them for my steel moment frames in the strong axis direction. To accomplish that, I can instruct the program to assign panel zones to my steel moment frames. Now before we do that, let's go ahead and discuss what a panel zone is in RAM frame. A panel zone element is intended to capture shear deformations within a panel zone area during the analysis. A panel zone area is defined as the region composed of the column web and bounded by the extensions of the beam flanges. So for this particular model, I'm going to assume that I want to consider rigid end zones for the intersections of my concrete moment frames. That's where my concrete beam and my concrete column are intersecting each other. But for the steel moment frames, which would be considerably more flexible, I'd like to go ahead and capture those shear deformations. And I can do that by assigning panel zones. To assign a panel zone, you first need to make sure that your criteria is set up to include rigid end zones. So let's go ahead and review how to do that. Again, we're going to go to the main menu, select criteria, followed by general, and make sure your include effects are turned on. The next thing we're going to do is go to the main menu, select assign, followed by columns, 
and select this panel zone option. Now through the panel zone dialog, you can assign panel zone elements in both the column strong axis and the weak axis. It should be noted that the weak axis option is only for steel HSS columns. All of the columns within my steel moment frames for this particular model are wide flange sections and I'm going to go ahead and select this column strong axis option. I'm going to ask the program to use the calculated values and then I'm going to select the appropriate columns. Let's go ahead and click single and I'm going to select all of the columns within my steel moment frames. If you would like to view that assignment on screen, you can go to the main menu, select View, followed by Members. Here in the Frame Column option, you can go ahead and turn on the option to display panel zones. We'll go ahead and click OK, and we should be able to see that information on screen. So at this point, if I were to go ahead and perform an analysis, I would notice that the rigid end zones would be included at the 25% reduction for my concrete moment frames, and the panel zone elements would be included for my steel moment frames, which would capture the shear deformations. At this point, this concludes our discussion on rigid end zones and panel zone elements. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.